that he does have time to Muslim extremists. I don't know. July 10th, 2017, Mosul, Iraq. A turning point in the war against the world's most dangerous terrorist group. داعش عندما أسقط الموصل وأعلن خلافته من هنا ونحن عدنا الموصل إلى حضن الوطن وقضينا على هذه الخلافة المزعومة اليوم فرحة كبيرة تم زفها من قبل القائد العام القوات المسلحة المحترم إلى الشعب العراقي بصورة عامة إلى الشعب الموصلي بصورة خاصة نتمنى أخواننا في مدينة الموصل أن يعيدوا ترتيب مدينتهم يقضوا على أول أسبقية يجب أن يفكروا في القضاء على الفكر الداعشي اللي زرع في بعض العقول وخاصة الجيل الجديد نتمنى أن ينسوا خلافاتهم نتمنى أن يعيدوا بناء مدينتهم وإن شاء الله كل العالم وكل الشعب العراقي مع هذه المدينة التاريخية العريقة After almost nine months of fierce fighting the campaign to recapture Mosul and defeat Daesh ends with success The Prime Minister of Iraq Haydar al-Abadi tweeted a celebration of the victory in which he said the world is seeing the end of the fake Daesh state and pledged to hunt down all of its remaining fighters. Now this terrorist group has lost control of a significant territory in Iraq where it could harbor foreign fighters or exploit resources like oil. Daesh's occupation of Mosul left Iraq's second largest city in ruins claimed thousands of lives, and displaced nearly one million people. I'm <laughs> يعني إذا ما يأخذون موصل كامل زين ترجع حكومة محلية ترجع المحافظة مراكز الشرطة مديريات ها دوائر ترجع ذا كل تصير أمان أسعى ماكو أمان ماكو أمان. The liberation of Mosul, Daesh's de facto capital in Iraq for three years, couldn't be achieved without a unified front against this terrorist group. The operation was the largest campaign in Iraq's recent history, with about 60,000 mobilized forces, a mix of forces from Iraq's counter-terrorism service, to regular troops, to Kurdish Peshmerga, and the Popular Mobilization Forces, PMF, known also as the al hasht al shabi which includes many different militias. While Washington seeks to downplay the Islamic Republic of Iran's role in the recapture of Mosul from Daesh terrorists, Many political analysts think otherwise. Just after the victory in Mosul, former Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki thanked Iran and praised the Islamic Republic for its advice to the Iraqi armed forces during the nine-month-long offensive. A week after the fall of Mosul in June 2014, Iraq's highest-ranking Shia cleric, Grand Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani, issued a holy fatwa which called for the mobilization of all sections of the society in Iraq to defend the nation against Daesh. Al-Sistani's religious fatwa enabled various Shia militias, Sunni tribal leaders, Izadis and Christians to come under the popular mobilization forces, which was instrumental in the battle against Daesh. ودفعت هذه الفتوى بمئات الآلاف وهذا النداء بمئات الآلاف من العراقيين شبابا وشيبا للالتحاق بجبهات القتال والتطوع مما أدى إلى تأسيس حشد شعبي عراقي مبارك شكل منذ البداية وما زال قوة حقيقية العراق إلى جانب القوات العراقية المصلحة The battle for Mosul is over now, but the struggle for Iraq's future is far from it. The imperative of defeating Daesh 
united Iraq's different forces. Now, there are fears that the fault lines between ethnic and religious groups may re-emerge. Last year, the president of Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdistan regional government, Masoud Barzani, called for a referendum on independence, stating, the time has come and the situation is now suitable for the Kurdish people to make a decision through a referendum on their fate. Meanwhile, the Kurds have taken advantage of the fight against Daesh to seize control of 70% of the territories in northern Iraq that are in dispute between Arabs and Kurds. While the victory over Daesh in Mosul is certainly worth celebrating, as its forces are now more concerned about simple survival than plotting attacks, it's worth recalling that the group continues to hold the Iraqi towns of Tal Afar and Hawija and its de facto Syrian capital, Raqqa. The question is, will the fall of Mosul be the fall of Daesh too? The fact is that the one thing that really brought together the fractious sects and ethnic groups of Iraq was their shared hatred of Daesh. While standing united against this terrorist group is of paramount importance, other measures have to be taken as well. Above all, cutting off its financial resources. Now it's an open secret which countries funded and armed Daesh with their petrodollars to fan the flames of sectarianism in the region. There's an early 2014 email from Hillary Clinton, so not so long after she left Secretary of State, to her campaign manager, John Podesta. Uh, that email, it states uh, that ISIL, ISIS, is uh, funded by Saudi Arabia and Qatar, the governments of Saudi Arabia and Qatar. As a criminal organization, Daesh would fill its coffer with smuggling, illegal oil sales, and other types of crime, such as bank robberies, kidnapping, and extortion. Cutting these financial resources is impossible without an international endeavor. as is the reconstruction of Iraq. Years of war, chaos and insecurity have left many parts of this country in tatters. Without international support, Iraq will not be able to rise from the ashes. With the recent defeat of Daesh, it seems that this group's days are numbered. But it doesn't mean that extremism in the region and the world will go away with Daesh. Experts believe Takfiri Wahhabism, rather than Daesh, is the root cause of extremism. And as long as this cause is not addressed, the world will not see an era of total peace and harmony. Daesh is the latest embodiment of an extreme ideology called Wahhabism, with its roots in Saudi Arabia. And as long as that ideology persists, the world will be threatened by terror and violence. All in all, the victory over Daesh in Mosul is good news. But the focus should now be on the real causes that led to the rise of this terrorist group, those that haven't been adequately addressed so far.